Miles, we didn't talk to you after the Alabama game. What was it like beating your, your former team and kind of just take us through that game? What was it like for you? Uh, yeah, it was great. Um, you know, just being able to see those guys that um, were always brothers to me and will still be brothers to me. Um, but being able to beat them was bittersweet. Um, and I'll never forget that night in Neyland. That was awesome. Miles, I know it's kind of early in the week, but looking at Kentucky, looking at that front seven, they can be kind of multiple at times. Uh, uh, they got some long, you know, athletic defenders. What have you seen from that group to kind of make it challenging for you guys on Saturday? Yeah, they have uh, they have depth. Um, they play really hard. Uh, they play gap sound. Um, linebackers have good eyes, um, and so this is going to be this is going to be a challenge for us for sure. Just attacking this week's preparation. Um, and honing in on the details and not taking anything for granted. So, How beneficial was this second open week for you, whether it's physically or, or mentally, to kind of help you out moving forward? Yeah, I would definitely say physically more than anything. Um, you know, starting to get to that point in the season where nagging pains are starting to become more and more. Um, so being able to take this weekend off and really just get my body back to where it needs to be, um, you know, coming into this week feeling really good. So. That was a much needed bye week. Miles, you, you're obviously used a lot as an inline blocker, but also running routes. Like during the week, can you get a pretty good gauge about which one of those you'll be doing more on game day, or does that happen more during the game? Uh, no, that's definitely, um, I would say every week, it's definitely been 50 50 uh, going into a game. And then all of a sudden, we'll get into a game and say, hey, you know, we're doing really well in this run, so let's bring Miles in and, um, you know, try to attack that. Or, hey, like once we spread out in 12 personnel, they're still in their base defense, let's spread them out and run routes in 12 personnel. Um, so it's really just the coaches seeing um, what our best advantage is, and that's really a game time thing. Miles, you talked a little little bit about it right there, but how, how much have you guys sort of expanded what you can do in, in that 12 personnel package to be able to do different things off of what you've shown game to game so far this season? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's awesome being able to get in 12 personnel, um, you know, get in the core and, and run the football efficiently. Um, but it's even better when you can get in 12 personnel, get them in a heavy defense and then spread everything out and where you have mismatches. Um, and so I think just continuing to prove to the coaches that they can trust us and knowing what to do um, and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, the more and more we get on with this 12 personnel stuff, um, I think we can be really dangerous with it. Brian? In the past, Tennessee's been pretty 50-50 with their tight end snap splits. When did you realize that you were going to play the majority of games at tight end? I mean, the guys have been doing great. Um, Ethan and Holden um, have been doing a really good job. Um, you know, I didn't really expect to take that many snaps, you know, as we get past like Arkansas. Um, but like Bama, you know, we split up a little bit more um, just as those guys continue to prove to Coach Abes um, and Coach Hype and Hosley that they can um, be efficient at this level and they have been. Um, you know, I think those snaps will start dwindling down for me, um, which is awesome because I can't play 75 snaps in a game. Like, we need fresh legs in there and fresh guys. And so for those guys to be able to step up and, um, you know, go out there and do their job um, is awesome for our team. Hypel talks a lot about confidence and competitive composure. How much have you seen that continue to develop on the offense, but maybe more specifically with Nico? Yeah, I would definitely say second half of the Bama game, you see Nico kind of get banged up a little bit, um, and you kind of see um, who he truly is and how he's built and how he's made and how he came back in the second half and put up 24 points against a really good defense. Um, and I, I think that we're going to continue to carry that on, uh, you know, through the rest of the season. Um, and, you know, just continuing to pour into our guys about how big confidence is, and it truly is everything. Um, you know, Nico's a young player. And this is a tough league. And, um, you know, that second half first Bama, I think we really saw what he could do. Um, and the coaches are great at pouring into him and pouring into everybody, you know, just that our ceiling is so high. Um, and, and, you know, we haven't even touched it yet. And so 
just going into this week, um, trying to keep that second half uh, momentum that we had versus Alabama, and just keep it rolling. So. Miles, I'm curious your thoughts on Kentucky's defensive line, if you've seen them at all, and and obviously Big Zero Walker in the middle there. That guy is kind of lines up all over the place. Is he someone that you've seen on film yet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've watched film on him. Um, we actually just got done watching film on on, on Kentucky. Um, like I said, they're high motor guys, um, big and athletic, um, and it's just going to be like every other week in this league. You know, you're always going to play a good defensive line. Um, and so just bringing it every day in our preparation this week so we can do our jobs inside of there.